A. Digital relationships. There has been considerable concern about the effects of the internet on people's social well-being. An influential study at one university found that subjects felt increasingly socially isolated the more time they spent online. This confirmed a common belief that the internet weakens personal bonds by emphasizing the quantity of one's so-called friends over the quality of relationships. Superficial interactions are encouraged, leaving people feeling lonelier and less connected to one another. However, the university study has been the subject of some criticism. Among other problems, it focused on novice internet users over a short duration. Many of the same subjects, when contacted years after the study ended, stated that continued internet use. Had actually had a positive effect on their social well-being. More recent research suggests that internet use may have other benefits. For example, searching for romantic partners online can lead to successful relationships. Some dating sites utilize complicated algorithms to match people with each other. This may help people find their ideal partner and form long-term romantic partnerships. Moreover, in some studies, spouses who had met online reported increased marital satisfaction, and may therefore face a lower risk of divorce than those who met offline. Questions. Number eleven. What is one criticism that has been raised about the university study? Number twelve. What is one thing the speaker suggests about dating sites? B. Synthetic diamonds. Although laboratory-made diamonds have been used in machinery and cutting tools for decades, they have rarely been used for jewelry. That may be changing, however. Some laboratories have even succeeded in producing Type 2A diamonds, the purest category. This is significant, as only a very small percentage of all naturally mined diamonds are Type 2A. The new high-quality synthetic diamonds are chemically identical to their natural counterparts, and they are now challenging natural diamonds for a share of the consumer jewelry market. Quality, though, is not the only factor attracting consumers to synthetic diamonds. Mining for natural diamonds has a reputation for oppressive working conditions and environmental unsustainability. Synthetic diamond manufacturers claim their production methods avoid labor concerns and result in fewer carbon dioxide emissions than mining. However, closing diamond mines could have detrimental effects on local communities. In some developing nations, diamond mines are one of the few means of employment. Therefore, some people argue that it is better to improve pay and conditions for miners than to take away their jobs. Efforts have been made by diamond mining companies to address environmental concerns. In response to pressure from environmental groups, some diamond mining companies have adopted carbon capture technology with the aim of becoming carbon neutral. Questions. Number thirteen. What do we learn about synthetic diamonds? Number fourteen. What is one way some diamond mining companies are trying to improve their practices? C. Gamification. These days, many businesses are incorporating features common to games through a practice known as gamification. Customer support centers, for instance, may allow customers to award points to customer service agents based on the quality of the service they provide. The agents get rewards such as additional pay 
based on the number of points they receive. The scores are also displayed to other agents, and some managers believe this can create an atmosphere where employees try to compete with one another to satisfy customers. Some managers also believe this element of competition can make the work more enjoyable, which could prove especially useful in jobs where wages are low and employee turnover is high. Critics of gamification argue that it reduces employee morale in the long term. Research has demonstrated that the most powerful motivators for employees are independence, skill development, and the satisfaction that comes from being engaged in meaningful work. External rewards may fail to satisfy these needs. Furthermore, it could be argued that such reward systems focus too much on success. According to one expert on game design, including more possibilities for failure would encourage workers to stay more committed to their work. Questions Number 15. What do some managers believe gamification can do? Number 16. According to critics, what does gamification fail to address? D. Land-based vertebrates. All land-based vertebrates, animals with a spine, are believed to have evolved from sea creatures. Scientists had long speculated that the move onto land occurred when some sea creatures' fins became stronger. Having stronger fins would have allowed creatures to move onto land to escape predators that could only swim. Recent research, however, indicates that sea creatures began to leave the ocean because they experienced a dramatic increase in eye size. This development meant that they were better equipped to spot potential food sources, like insects, on land, and it triggered a transition to searching out such prey. Another evolutionary adaptation involving vision coincided with the move to land. The eyes of some creatures began moving toward the tops of their heads. This would not have benefited creatures when looking through water, as water restricts visual range but the change would have allowed them to see more clearly when above the surface. These developments in visual ability may also have contributed to a change in neural circuitry. Such a change may have helped land-based vertebrates to develop skills such as planning when they hunted, rather than relying solely on quick reaction times. Questions Number 17 According to recent research, what caused sea creatures to move on to land? Number 18. What does the speaker say about the development of land-based vertebrates? E. Masking war injuries. World War I was brutal in many ways. The use of machine guns and other powerful weapons caused terrible destruction. In addition, much of the fighting took place in long, deep ditches known as trenches. Although trenches protected soldiers' bodies, their heads were often exposed, leaving them vulnerable to machine gun and sniper fire. As a result, many soldiers suffered injuries to their faces. In contrast to previous wars, however, advancements in surgical techniques allowed increased survival rates for those with serious wounds. Still, many soldiers were left with facial injuries for life, and some felt ashamed of their injuries. Around the same time, the field of cosmetic surgery was emerging. Artists began helping injured soldiers by creating facial parts made from metal, including complete masks made from thin sheets of copper. Sculptor Anna Coleman Ladd became famous for her mask-making skills. 
She took great care to ensure that the features on her masks were accurate and that the color matched the patient's skin color exactly. She was able to create a new face that was amazingly similar to the original by using photos of the victims before they were injured. These developments gave many soldiers the confidence to resume productive lives. Questions Number 19. What is one way that World War I was different from previous conflicts? Number 20. What is true of Anna Coleman Ladd 